prominent in the skyline of Chicago is the Board of Trade Building. In the shadow of its great tower stands the LaSalle Street Station, truly a place where East meets West. But the real West is beyond, far away in miles, near at hand in hours for those who travel on the Rocky Mountain Rocket. This gleaming new streamlined train of the Rock Island lines affords unsurpassed luxury of accommodations without extra fare. Coach passengers enjoy, at no extra cost, comfortable reclining chairs which are individually reserved. Many travelers enjoying precious hours in Chicago prefer to have their luncheon aboard the train soon after the start. rocket continues on its way west. We're putting the miles behind us at a rate that means Denver or Colorado Springs in the morning, for the rocket is a fast train without sacrificing for speed a single factor of comfort. Women especially praise the generous, well-equipped retiring rooms. Travel with children, sometimes difficult in the past, has been made remarkably easy and pleasant by the exceptional facilities and complete service which the rocket provides. Nothing is overlooked. Sleeping cars attended by competent, courteous porters of long experience provide for overnight travelers. At dinner time, the brightly illuminated dining car is again the center of interest. Rock Island menus are always attractive in variety and in price. Here, gay vacation parties are already anticipating the wonders that tomorrow will unfold. And the days to come in the mountains, on dude ranches, or at famous resorts, where you'll see some of these good companions again. Perhaps you'll want to spend the evening with them in the observation lounge, reading, writing, following a favorite radio program, or enjoying refreshment from the buffet while the rocket carries you westward through the night. Stopping first at Englewood Union Station, the rocket then follows the afternoon sun across rich Illinois farmland and traverses Iowa with stops at three principal cities. This route through the agricultural heart of America includes Nebraska centers. And then in the early hours of the morning, the rocket reaches Lyman and becomes two trains, which arrive almost simultaneously at Denver and at Colorado Springs. Travelers who make Denver their first stop in Colorado will be shown the imposing state capitol with its dome covered by gold leaf in tribute to pioneer prospectors who developed the mineral treasures of the Rockies. The handsome annex provides additional offices for administration of state affairs. The Civic Center offers an exceptional display of American Indian art, and Cheeseman Park affords a preview of the picturesque peaks of the nearby Rockies. The Park of the Red Rocks is one of the mountain parks maintained by the city of Denver with an easy driving distance for a single day's excursion. Its fantastic erosion forms provide infinite challenge to amateur explorers. Accessible in the same short trip is the municipal game preserve in Cody Park with its herd of handsome elk. Not far away near Lookout Mountain, one may observe remnants of the numberless bison which supplied meat for Indians, pioneers, and later railroad builders. Perhaps most widely known of the buffalo hunters was Buffalo Bill, whose burial place is here on Lookout Mountain together with a memorial museum. Echo Lake is the objective of another attractive all-day trip. And many visitors plan to spend the night there in order to enjoy the morning spectacle of sunrise from the top of nearby Mount Evans. North and west of Denver lies the wonderland of the Rocky Mountain National Park, reached by splendid highways as modern as they are picturesque. Three routes lead to Estes Park Village at the eastern end of the amazing Trail Ridge Road, a triumph of highway engineering which threads the mountains to Grand Lake, Western Park entrance. The North St. Vrain Highway is one familiar approach to Estes Park for travelers from Denver. The motor trip is easily accomplished in three hours or less. Other routes are via the South St. Vrain and through this, the Big Thompson Canyon, where the highway makes bend after bend for a distance of 20 miles 
following the gorge of this mountain stream and emerging finally near the village of Estes Park. Now the real adventures begin. Here, spread out in magnificent panorama, are the rugged ranges of Rocky Mountain National Park with Estes Park Village in the foreground. In the distance may be seen the peaks of the Continental Divide, prominent among them being Long's Peak, more than 14,000 feet high. Olympus Lodge is a favorite resort for visitors to Estes Park. From Long's Peak Inn, planned and built by Inosay Mills' famed nature guide, the peak itself is imposing. Columbine Lodge is not far distant, and there is Baldpate Inn YMCA Conference Center. The Estes Park Chalet Ranch provides for the pleasure of 300 guests, and the Stanley Hotel is another delightful resort. Many other fine hotels and inns provide excellent food and shelter. Stables at or near Estes Park provide a choice of 1,500 saddle horses with suitable ones for every preference and every degree of equestrian experience. Mary's Lake, only a half hour's horseback ride from their hotel, is the destination of this party who have planned an early morning trip with an open air breakfast on the shore of the lake by way of refreshment. Some of them will follow the trail onward to Bear Lake, Nymph Lake, and Dream Lake beyond, places as intriguing as their names. But don't think for a moment that you need to be a trail rider to see beauties of the park. A fine road will lead you within its boundaries and to the Thousand Acres Stead Ranch, another fascinating resort. Follow that same highway and you'll enjoy the amazing spectacles of Trail Ridge Road, highest continuous motor road in America. To make the magnificent panorama of the Colorado Rockies accessible to everyone, instead of restricting it to a few rugged mountaineers, the National Park Service spent one and a quarter million dollars to construct this splendid highway, completed in 1932. Snow-capped peaks pass in endless review, ranges which challenged their first explorers hardly more than a century ago, but are accessible now to every lover of their wild grandeur. Full enjoyment of the scenic opportunities demands occasional stops. Here, a cleft in the rocky wall called the window affords a view of the gorge lakes below with Mount Julian and Mount Ida beyond. 12,183 feet is the highest point on Trail Ridge Road, and the view is one to remember, although four continuous miles of this remarkable highway are at an elevation of more than 12,000 feet, making it probably the longest stretch of road ever built at such a height. Even more spectacular than the scenery are the bighorn sheep, Rocky Mountain natives which surpassed the celebrated Swiss chamois in grace, size, and handsomeness. They're likely to be seen at Sheep Lake or among the volcanic rocks of Specimen Mountain. Following Trail Ridge Road to its end, we come to Grand Lake, western gateway to this wonderland of mountains. But for all its magnificence, it was not scenery that brought settlers to Colorado, but gold, wealth that is still being won from the rock. To see the mountains is much but not to see a gold mine is to miss the very basis of Colorado's wealth and greatness. A visit to a mine is well worthwhile. Eighty years ago, the Colorado gold rush was America's most alluring gamble. Now, gold mining is as soberly conducted as any manufacturing business, but romance still clings to it. And romance of a different kind, perhaps, also cloaks the whole fascinating experience of ranch life. Traveling with a chuck wagon, living in the saddle, Capturing something of the freedom and adventure of the great open spaces, Eastern visitors arrive as dudes, but soon transform themselves, in spirit at least, into real cowhands. With splendid Western horses, substantial food, warm hospitality, and friendly companionship, Colorado dude ranches provide a vacation experience which many visitors value above any other. But that's only one kind. Glenwood Canyon marks the approach to Glenwood Springs, famed Colorado Health Resort at the junction of the Colorado and Roaring Fork Rivers. Here, readily accessible mountain lakes and streams hold forth the challenge of unsurpassed fishing. Serious followers of that sport cast their flies, often with dazzling success, in such mountain brooks as these. 
And in an occasional deep pool, there's opportunity to view some of the big ones that have thus far got away, but may yet be caught. The Hotel Colorado at Glenwood Springs combines recreational activities with the health-giving properties of the famous Yampa Hot Springs, available in mineral baths of several kinds. Its appeal is by no means limited to invalids, however, for here is the world's largest natural warm water swimming pool, an irresistible attraction for those who consider no vacation complete without aquatic sports. Some guests enjoy the sandy beach by the pool, while others seek the tennis courts, the golf course, or the ever-popular stables. Perfect relaxation may make even a very active life as restful as slow motion, so perhaps we're ready to move on to a new thrill, the Royal Gourd. The Denver and Rio Grande Western follows a spectacular twisting route where railroad building taxed the resourcefulness of engineers. More than a thousand feet above the Arkansas River is the Royal Gorge Bridge, said to be the highest in the world. It's especially interesting to travelers who enjoy the impressive view it affords of the canyon and the toy-like railroad which hugs its walls far below. You don't have to be a mountain climber to get an intimate experience of the Royal Gorge. For the world's steepest railway, really an elevator inclined at an angle of 45 degrees, provides convenient, safe transportation between the level of the bridge and the floor of the canyon. The cable cars accommodate 21 passengers each, one group ascending as the other group descends to inspect the upward view from the bank of the Arkansas River. When we reach the top, we'll not be far from Colorado Springs. Some travelers take the rocket directly here for their vacation pleasures, instead of taking the northern route to Denver. And here is such a mountain setting as words cannot well describe. One mountain must be named, the very symbol of the state, Pikes Peak, seen here from Colorado Street. Exactly in the center of the city is the renowned Antlers Hotel, headquarters for visitors who enjoy the magnificent view down Pikes Peak Avenue from one of the most attractively located hotels in the United States. Surrounded by 15 acres of park and gardens, the Antlers provide the spacious terrace where guests, with their refreshments, may enjoy an unobstructed view of the whole amazing panorama of the Rampart Range. Of course, there are other hotels. The plaza facing the campus of Colorado College is a favorite resort with many. And among other attractive centers is the famous Broadmoor, located at the base of Cheyenne Mountain, not far from the city of Colorado Springs. Here, beauty of situation is supplemented by facilities for the most luxurious entertainment. This is the scene of the annual Broadmoor Invitation Golf Tournament and a course always challenging to the skill of hotel guests. The Colorado Springs polo team ranks high and the polo field at Broadmoor is the scene of many a fast thrilling game. With an easy access are scores of other things to see. There is the famed highway from Broadmoor to the summit of Cheyenne Mountain. This passes at an elevation of 8,000 feet the Will Rogers Shrine of the Sun built entirely of stone from the slopes of Cheyenne Mountain. This was dedicated in 1937 as a tribute to the much-loved homespun philosopher and humorist, and is visited by thousands of Americans who remember warmly that wise and winning character. A bust of Will Rogers is a part of the memorial. Twice a day throughout the year, comfortable buses negotiate the picturesque drive up Cheyenne Mountain. The road is a splendid example of highway engineering in rough country, protected, wide with sweeping turns, and a steady, moderate grade which is nowhere excessively steep. At the summit is Cheyenne Lodge, an attractive adaptation of Indian Pueblo architecture erected for the accommodation of visitors. 
Here, travelers come to lunch or dine and to enjoy another of those amazing views which are the wonder of the Colorado Rockies. A comfortable observation terrace overlooks the valley and distant mountains. Colorado Springs is the center, too, of the Will Rogers Rodeo, an annual event of unmistakably Western sport. Trick riding has an important part now in what was originally a competition to display proficiency in tasks that were part of the cowboy's daily work. Performances like this are classed as exhibition events. But bulldogging a steer with a stopwatch keeping your time is something else again. And though Jimmy Nesbitt ranks as America's foremost rodeo clown, he's really serious about this wrestling match. The theory of riding a bronco is that if you can stay on for the first 10 seconds, you can stay indefinitely. But to ride for those 10 seconds, according to contest rules, calls for real talent and skill. Western girls have what it takes, and this one puts on a ride that would do credit to the best of the cowboys. A wild Brahma steer is harder to stick to with plain and fancy pitching and no saddle. We'd rather not try it. The Indian encampment is a part of every important rodeo, and of course no traveler has seen the West unless he has met some of these first citizens of America. Although they have adopted many of the white man's ways, baby carriages are not widely used. And when you see a fine distinguished face like this, you glimpse the true dignity of the Indian. And now we turn again to scenic beauties within a half hour's drive of Colorado Springs, South Cheyenne Canyon, Eagle Cliff, Inspiration Point, and Seven Falls. Let them tell of their own charms. If one lacks time for a visit to the land of the cliff dwellers, this faithful reproduction of a hundred room house near Manitou Springs will reveal their life. Still another famous view may be gained by riding the scenic inclined railway up the slopes of Mount Manitou. In the Manitou region also is Williams Canyon, one more of those deep gorges which geologists call youthful erosion phenomena, although to the layman their very ruggedness suggests great age. A road has been built between the vertical walls, which at the narrows come almost close enough together to make one automobile a matter of traffic congestion. This is the route to the underground spectacle, the Cave of the Winds. Not all the wondrous views of the Colorado Rockies are from the mountain tops, for erosion has likewise been going on deep in the earth and with fantastic consequences. Competent guides conduct visitors through the 19 curious chambers of the cave. Mineral-laden waters seeping from above have left their tiny deposits accumulating into great stalactites. In like manner, stalagmites have been built upon the cavern floor. The incalculably slow processes of chemical change have formed rare crystalline mineral displays. And now above ground once more, we find a strange unearthly landscape almost suggestive of the fantasies of nature in the caves. This is the Garden of the Gods, a park belonging to the city of Colorado Springs. Its curious formations of red rock have been given descriptive names by the imaginative, but mere adjectives can add nothing to the majesty of this rare sight. The balanced rock stands in another part of the same park, just west of the Garden of the Gods. An additional formation, known as the Indian Rocks, belongs also to this group and shares its geological history. But now, it's time for the great spectacle of them all. Pike's Peak, the mountain which Colonel Zebulon Pike said would never be scaled. 
the landmark which so surely signified attainment of the West to the gold seekers that they phrased their slogan, Pike's Peak or Bust. Now the unattainable has been made easy of access to every motorist, for a splendid, broad, well-graded highway leads to the very summit of Pike's Peak. Thousands of visitors ascend to the summit every year and feel that they have accomplished one of the things which every American, in his heart, intends sometime to do. The easy ascent of Pikes Peak did not wait upon construction of the motor highway, however, for the famous Cog Railway has carried passengers for almost a generation. The Manitou and Pikes Peak Railway reaches the highest altitude of any scenic mountain railway in the world, considerably exceeding those of the Swiss Alps. Recently modernized, the line has supplanted puffing, smoking steam locomotives with thoroughly modern, up-to-date diesel-electric power and streamlined trains. There are many vantage points along the route. Here, the Garden of the Gods may be seen. Now, near the timber line, the train attacks a steep grade. Many visitors use both cog road and highway, traveling up by one and down by the other to ensure the most complete variety of scenery. From this point, Lake Moraine is the attraction. And from the summit, 60,000 square miles of plains and mountains comprise the magnificent landscape. 25 Colorado mountains exceed the 14,000 foot elevation of Pikes Peak. But once you ascend it, you'll feel that at last the great American Rockies are truly yours. And if you linger for the final spectacle of the sunset, a part of you will always yearn for... You'll remember always this vacation land supreme and the luxury of the Rocky Mountain Rocket. <laughs>